Now, up until recently, you probably hadn't heard of coronavirus, but it's actually pretty common across the world. And apparently it can be hard to detect because the symptoms are same perhaps as the common cold. So we're not doctors, but we know a doctor and he's actually <laughs> an expert in viruses. Dr. Alex Greninger at UW, you're one of the leading uh, directors there of the uh, virology lab. So we appreciate you joining us to sort all this out. Okay, let me just start with like question number one. Like when this news came out, was this a massive shock to people like you? Yeah, it was surprising in a way. I mean, it kind of happened very quickly. Certainly things have escalated in the last couple of a couple of days here. Um, I think there have been a lot of people who have been interested in new coronaviruses, but we really only had SARS and MERS to speak of in the last like 15 years, other than the four common coronaviruses which we were talking about. Right. Which is a good thing that we only right. had the SARS and MERS, right? You don't yes, want to see absolutely. them. Yeah. But what exactly makes something a coronavirus? Because it's a new coronavirus, right. correct? So what does that really well, mean for folks? So coronaviruses were first found in the 1930s and then like seen physically in like the 1960s and 70s, where they had this sort of like solar corona around the outside of the virus. They had these very large spike proteins that they could see, and that's why they got the name. And now we do this all genetically, genomically, we define them. So basically is how the genome structured, how the virus is put together, and that sort of makes it a family of viruses. Okay. Coronaviruses right now seem to be mostly in animals and mammals. They seem to have a large bat reservoir as well. Huh. So okay. then this one starts apparently at a seafood market or a seafood restaurant uh, in, in China. How, how does it work in layman's terms to get from there to SeaTac Airport? Right. It's a, it's a great question. That's one of the things that sort of we're work, that people are working on right now. There's actually not any coronaviruses I could think of that are in seafood. Um, so it could be like a bat roosting in the seafood market or other wild <laughs> animals. You know, back in the day with SARS in 2002, 2003, it was in a bat reservoir and then got passed to a palm civet and a raccoon dog in a wild animal market that then made the jump to people. And so we really don't know, you know, what the reservoir is. That's something we have to work on to figure out. But right now it seems like it was just sort of this sort of one-off event where it went to people and now it's, it's sort of passing to people. That's our current best model of mm -hmm. what's going on. Interesting. Can we get to some viewer text messages that have been coming in? Uh, we do have one from Wally, I think, first. What protections do the latest flu vaccine, if any, offer any protection? Well, the, the, the flu vaccine this year is, is you know, reasonably good um, for the flu, for influenza. The flu vaccine itself is not going to help for the sure. coronavirus, a completely different virus. Um, so, but you still should get the, actually the best thing you can do for your health and well-being and that of others is to get a flu vaccine if you haven't had one already. And going back to the coronavirus real, real quickly, uh, how scared should people be? I'm going, let's say I'm flying to SeaTac tomorrow out of SeaTac. Um, should I be worried? Yeah, I wouldn't be worried if I were flying uh, out of SeaTac. I think we're going to learn a lot in the next week. We've only had a diagnostic test available now for about the last week, right? So we really haven't been able to figure out um, how many cases. The, all the cases have been associated with, with Wuhan, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we at least have that right now. Um, but we don't, uh, there's still a lot to learn about where this virus is. It certainly seems to be spreading in China um, effectively right now. We have another viewer question from Anna. She wants to know how long is the virus active in the area after the infected person leaves? Do we know? So, so right now, with, we only know from coronaviruses. We're sure. still very early here. Coronaviruses seem to have short incubation periods, about three to five days. Um, with SARS, though, which is our best analogy right now, we're just sort of reaching here because we don't really know. Um, it, the viral levels in a person actually peaked about 12 days after they started having symptoms. The good news with SARS is that people weren't really infectious. They couldn't transmit the virus unless they had uh, symptoms, right? So you had less asymptomatic transmission. And then with SARS, we actually kept people for uh, 10 days after they were finished having symptoms. Mm -hmm. So the amount of time, I mean, we, we didn't have any cases really in the United States, but in China and in, in Canada, they kept people for you know, two to three weeks. All right, we have a lot okay. more questions to get to, both from us and from the viewers. We are glad you're going to stick around for another hour. Sure. We're going to ask Thank you, you. Again in, in an hour from now. Dr. Alex Greninger from UW, we appreciate your insight here on King 5 Morning.